All right, hey everybody. Uh, today we are going to be putting a two inch uh, high lifter uh, lift kit in the 2003 Sportsman 500 HO. So this will be the install video for the two inch high lifter lift kit. So it should be pretty decent. Um, we went around and measured the specs from the bottom of the floorboards, <coughs> from the front of the bottom of the two bumper, and from the back hitch, just to see roughly what I did this for a lift. And then after that we'll be putting on some tires which we'll get to um, in a different video. So, But this is just a lift kit install for the um, high lifter lift kit. So. Alright so we're going to uh, check the height on the four wheeler here before we put the two inch lift kit on it and tires. So right now to the bottom of the hitch we are at What are we at? 15 and quarter, roughly? About a quarter. Yeah. On this side by the front, right where it meets the mudguard. We are at 14. Just under 14. The front by the two bumper looks like it is. About 20 19 and, and three quarter to the bottom. Three. Yep. Okay. It's about 19 and three quarter to the bottom there. All right, guys. So we're just gonna install the two inch uh, high lifter lift kit. Got one tire off. Um, just opened up the kit here. This is for O3 Sportsman 500. We have got this big plate, which I have no clue what all this stuff is for yet, but. And we have all this stuff. We've got a little sticker that's already trashed. That was nice. I like stickers. I love stickers. Why did they? Blue for time. Blue for time. Got you guys. You're gonna be YouTube famous. American made high lifter sticker. Uh, what's in this one, Mike? Or what's in here if you can open it? Uh, here's your uh, brackets and spacers. This is your relocation brackets and spacers, I do believe. And then this must be for the front, I'm thinking. And then there's all your bolts. So that's what you get with the two inch lift kit, is that stuff. So hopefully it's not too terrible to put on there. Already got this one off, so I'll show you step by step how, we're, how we do this, how it goes. All right, so the first step, got to take the uh, tires off, put the jack up, jack that up. We're removing the tires, that way we can get to the shock area a lot easier this way. So, All right, so after you got the tires removed, you're going to want to pull your bottom shock bolt out. This is the way we're doing it anyway. And then loosen up your top shock bolt, pull that out, so then you can actually remove your full, uh, your full shock on there. And we have the axle resting on the tire, that way it doesn't drop down anymore um, and pop out your, uh, your little axles or whatever. But you got basically this plate here, this big plate will mount up in the center underneath there. I don't have a light right now. Uh, let me get a light and I'll show you guys. Yeah, there we go. So bracket will mount up in the center which we're gonna do now and then after that you connect uh, your other adapters to that these little arm gadgets these little buggers will come in from the shock basically and attach to the bottom of that bracket so we'll show you in a second here all right so we put that center bracket in there and now our next step was to use this top um, shock a basically spacer bracket and slide that up in there and we used in the center of it use one of these little included spacers in there so it doesn't collapse anything when you tighten it down etc etc so this is your little spacer that goes in there and your bolt goes through the top where your uh, shock used to mount into so you're basically just relocating the top of your shock mount from up here to over here is what's happening so next we'll mount the top of the shock into here 
and then uh, there will be two washers on one side of it and one washer on the other side when you mount that bugger in there. So hopefully I can show you once it's done, but that's what we're going to work on now. Now once you're and you also need to uh, undo this bolt from the top of your uh, torsion bar and remove these torsion bars and put in the longer included torsion bars that come with the kit which he's grabbing for right now. There's a longer one and it just threads on to the bottom bolt and then we'll have to raise the ATV up a little bit to get that in there probably. Want me to raise it up a little? There you got it. Or just muscle it up. So that's your uh, torsion spacer, so it just kind of gives you more room there for everything. Now we'll just tighten them and up. And then tighten them up, and you're good to go for that. All right, so we got the other. Uh, couple of bolts in here for the top part of the shock. So you actually have this bracket that comes down to go to uh, this bracket here that comes down. Make sure you put that in and it goes to the back side. If you can see it goes to the back side of that plate and then we'll put a bolt in here for that. And then on your top of your shock you're going to put one washer and we, it didn't say in the instructions, but we put the two washers to the front side of the shock and the single washer to the back side. And then we'll uh, tighten this up. So that's where we're at now. And then on this side, we still have to uh, switch out that torsion spacer, which is right here. So we'll work on swapping that bugger out. And we're getting pretty close for being done with the back side. All right guys, so for the passenger side where your exhaust is on here, it's so crowded up in there, trying to get to the top of your shock mount and everything to uh, put in your spacers and whatnot. We just took the whole shock out. And what we did, instead of mounting the top piece to where your stock bracket location is, we actually took it all out. And this is the hardest part right here because you got to get these two washers in on the front side and then the single washer on the back side and then this this bar right here has got to get put on also to go to that big square plate we put in so it's easier just take the shock out bolt all this stuff up get it roughly where you want it put your uh, nut on there um, we're not tightening it down yet but then all we have to do is lift this whole thing up in there and then just put the top uh, put the top bolt through which I'll show you we just got to slide the top bolt through a little bit like this and then all we got to worry about is holding this spacer in here to have the bolt go right through the center of that so it's a lot easier and less complicated than trying to uh, get all those little tiny washers to line up and holding everything up in there where you don't have any space to work behind there basically so just a little shortcut trick save you guys some time so then we'll be just about finished with the back. Here you can see that new uh, torsion spacer in there too. So and then after that, we'll start on the front. See how that goes. So to install the uh, passenger side over here, the top shock mount, it was a pain in the butt to uh, do because your shock was bumping into your exhaust. There's not really a lot of room in there. So we loosened the uh, the exhaust bolts, one here, one here, excuse me, I got the hiccups, and one right there. And then we also loosen this up too. And then after that, put your bottom bolt back in, hook in these, uh, and you gotta hook in these two little arms right here, which bolt up to that plate. Hook those two up on each side. Yep. Then right there, tighten everything down and you're good to go. Otherwise, yeah, good to go. And that's the uh, wrong side. That goes on the other side. I 
Thanks for wheeling it over, though. It must be cold out because I just read this thing out there maybe half hour ago. That would be for this side, yep. How's the tempo? I just read this out the Oof, I got the hiccups bad. Had a big old nice hamburger and now it's coming back to haunt me. There it is. Is that pretty much on there? Yep. Oh, that looks so much nicer. Dang, that looks nice. <laughs> the front end's like way down low and the back's just <laughs> jacked up there. That'll look pretty good. Some big meats on there though. Serious meats. Hopefully it's not too big. I'll have to let you guys know if those are, uh, stay tuned to my channel, uh, subscribe to it, and I'll let you know if those tires, 28s, I'll let you know if they're too big or not. So hopefully I don't have to uh, get a clutch kit. I might have to, if I do I'll get the QSC, they make like a mud clutch kit for them for 28 inch tires, so if I need to I'll look into it, but we'll see how it goes. Alright, we've got to get everything tightened down, work on the front end, and see how that goes. So far so good. Easy peasy. Hey uh, Jeff, we got to get those tires on there, so uh, you want to grab my nuts? Sure, put them in my hand. <laughs> Here, be gentle, please. I will. <laughs> oh, God. You two behind the scenes bloopers. Gotta love it. They're individually wrapped. <laughs> I've seen that. Look at this. He's These nuts right are individually wrapped, every one of them. That's crazy. So we got the back done. Now we're uh, working on the front, putting in the two inch high lifter lift kit. Um, first thing you want to do is remove your boot guards from the front, which we already did. There's three uh, little Torx bolts holding that in. This just went up here. So you take that off. And then next thing, we, uh, we put a safety strap on here, going down around your axle hub up to the rack. And then uh, we snugged it up just a little bit. It's not real tight, but it's tight enough to hold it. The reason for doing that is you want to loosen these two bolts right here which will allow your strut to drop down from your shock. This will stay here but that will allow everything to drop down so you can uh, put in your spacer um, right here. So you can put in these spacers, one on the bottom, the little one on the bottom and the big one on top. That's what gives you your two inch lift in the front of here. But when you loosen these, you're going to want to have that safety on there so it doesn't drop down too much because if this hub drops down too much, you're going to pull this uh, shaft out from your, your hub there and then you're going to have a mess on your hands. Have a lot more work for yourself, so make sure you have that safety on there and don't let these A-arms drop all the way down when you undo this stuff. So, all right, just kind of a quick little tip. So we got to do that side and then we'll come over and do this side here. So we're doing one side at a time right now. So we're trying to get the front of this bugger off. You can't drop down the A-arm very far, otherwise all your stuff's gonna come out. So what we did, rigged a ratchet strap up going underneath your uh, brake caliper here to hold your A-arm from dropping down so that stuff doesn't come out of your hub. And then uh, we've got a ratchet strap going in your spring to act like a spring compressor and then it's going down around the bottom of your A-arms basically and tighten them up to compress the spring. We already put the uh, little spacer down inside the strut so it's in there and then the bigger one sets on top of that lip. So now the problem is trying to get, Let's see if I can get this the problem is trying to get that top piece right there into that shock mount. That little, yep, that bolt up there, we got about another inch to go to get that in and up through that hole. Once we get that, then we'll be good. 
So we just got to compress everything a little bit more right now. So that's what we're working on. Pain in the ass. So hopefully you got a spring compressor or something different, but the front is, uh, oops, front is uh, kind of a pain right now, but we will get her. I want to show them how, uh, how what? You can tell them. The... So what are we doing? All right, so for this side, we are doing the same thing, putting a ratchet strap, wrapping it down around by your... On the hub. So that way, when you undo these two bolts, it doesn't shove this straight down, which then will pop, pop your CV joint out. Yep, so strap up to the rack. We'll hold everything, undo those two bolts. That'll take the pressure and shove everything down so you can get the uh, strut out. Oh, it's a strap a little bit tight. It allows it so it doesn't push this down too far to pop that out. So we compress the uh, the shock spring there. Let me turn up the exposure here. Compress the shock spring, and then we popped it out of the top loop with the strap. And then now we undid the strap, and now he's trying to slide the uh, bottom of the shock up out of the strut, which he just did. And there that is. So now we have these two uh, coils, these two spacers. The little one goes down inside the actual tube there. Yep, and then the big one sets on top of the collar on the tube right here. Here, let me show them for, so they know. The big one sets right. There's a ring that there come off this at the same time. All right, so there's a ring or collar that goes on top of there. That sits on there. And then this big spacer sits on top of that ring. And then this whole assembly goes down in on top of there. So it's easier to put that on there and then you get to slide that on top, and then the pain in the butt part is trying to get the top of that shock mount back up in the uh, the top hole where it's supposed to go. So now we really got to compress the heck out of everything, get it all in there again. So that's the fun part, but once you get that done, then you're good to go. So yeah, I'll check back in with you once we get it all compressed and put in, and then we'll get the tires thrown on it. There we go. Got this side done. Yeah, throw that one on. I'll put the other boot guard on this one. Got her all in. So there's your spacer. Everything shocks slid back down in the tube. Tops all put on. That's the uh, lift kit. So now we just got to put the tires on here and see where we're sitting, see how everything fits and how it looks. Yeah, once they roll, they should be pretty good. You get them like you say off center, and then they're they're pretty uh, bumpy. <laughs> I just hope those don't hit the fender. Oh no, they should. Sorry, that's what I, I got a sawzall for that. I want to sawzall my fenders on a nice four wheeler? God. Custom fab. <laughs> Custom fab. That is true. Well, there the wheeler is all uh, finished up. Got the two inch lift put on it, 28 inch uh, tall, 10 inch wide by 14 inch wheels also put on. Here was the stock wheels that came on it. And these are the, these are the aftermarket ones we put on here. So if we measure the ground clearance, see what we're sitting at here. I don't remember when we started what we were at. I'll have to look back at the video, but now we're right at 17 and just about 17 and a half for ground clearance on this bugger. 
in the floorboard where we were here, move the floorboard. We're at 17 and about a quarter. Let's see. At about 17 and a quarter on that one. In the front to the bottom of the bumper. Get the tape straight, we're at 24 and 24 and a quarter. So that's with a two inch lift and going to 28 inch tires. So this is Temptation 2003 here. He's getting ready to go on his maiden voyage on his brand new lifted ATV. Yeah, like 